OK, so in this video, we want to make a quick remark about different notations that can be used in stating the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if you recall, we can look first at the indefinite integral of lowercase f. Again, when we talk about the indefinite integral, we talk about all antiderivatives to lowercase f. So the derivative of uppercase f must be lowercase f of x. And as antiderivatives are unique up to the addition of a constant, we have here all antiderivatives to lowercase f. And if we look at the definite integral now of f from a to b, so finding the net area under the curve f between x equals a and x equals b, we know that we can bypass the limit of the Riemann sum. And this again is the fundamental theorem of calculus simply by using an antiderivative of lowercase f and doing f of b minus f of a. Now here's a few more ways of writing this out and they're all equivalent. The first way is to write f of x and we write a vertical bar from a to b. So the vertical bar means if we go backwards, evaluate the function at the upper bound, so replace x by b, so you do f of b, then minus the function at the lower bound, so f of a. So a different way of writing this difference of antiderivative. And you may wonder, well, does it matter which antiderivative we use, right? Because to any given function there are, as c is an arbitrary constant, infinitely many antiderivatives. So can we use any antiderivative? And the answer is yes. And let's prove it quite quickly. So what if we take some antiderivative of lowercase f and add to it any constant? Let's see what happens if we evaluate this at b minus at a. So let's use our new notation. So we want to evaluate the antiderivative from a to b. So first, replacing x by b, but c is a constant. So c stays c. So we get f of b plus c, then minus all of this when x is a. Open up your brackets. But again, c is a constant. So c remains c no matter what x is. So we get f of a plus c. And if we perform the subtraction, well, we get f of b, but then plus c minus c. So the c's cancel, and we're left with f of b minus f of a. So you see that we get the same result again. So it doesn't matter which antiderivative we use, as the constant will cancel from b to a, as the constant remains the same, whether x is b or x is a. So if we then look at this side of the equation here, we can replace f of x plus c in terms of this notation, what we call the indefinite integral of lowercase f. So if we look from the first integral, the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, we can jump here, and this says if you want the net area under a curve, first find an antiderivative of lowercase f, and since any antiderivative will do, we usually take c to be zero, and then once you have this antiderivative, evaluate at b, then evaluate at a, and perform the difference and this will return the net area below f between x equals a and x equals b. So different ways of writing out the fundamental theorem of calculus. This one is quite nice simply because we see explicitly the connection between the definite and the indefinite integral. 